welcome to our review on the contact process. When we're talking about the contact process, we're talking about one that's used to make sulfuric acid. Now, sulfuric acid is a very important chemical because we use it in a huge range of other processes once we've made the acid itself. And in order to make the sulfuric acid, we need three raw materials, sulfur, air and water. The contact process itself is made up of three stages, which are summarized in the diagram just below there. What we're going to do is we're going to take each stage one at a time to talk about what's happening and to look at the balanced symbol equations for each, which you do need to know. Stage one is where we start off with sulfur and air as our raw materials. And what we're going to do is we're going to burn the sulfur in air to produce sulfur dioxide. So stage one, sulfur plus oxygen makes sulfur dioxide. So hopefully we do know that sulfur has the symbol S and that's a solid at room temperature. Oxygen, O2, remember it always goes around as a diatomic molecule and there's gas. And that makes sulfur dioxide, which as the name suggests is SO2. And again, that's a gas. Stage two is where sulfur dioxide and oxygen react to produce sulfur trioxide. And as the name there suggests, there's three oxygens joined onto a sulfur, hence trioxide. So we start off with two molecules of sulfur dioxide plus our oxygen, and we're going to make two molecules of sulfur trioxide. And the key thing to remember here is that this part is a reversible reaction. So make sure you draw it with the reversible reaction sign. In order to actually maximize this process, what we need are certain conditions. So we use a pressure of two atmospheres, a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius, and a catalyst of vanadium oxide. And by doing that, we actually end up with a 96% yield at this point. The third and final stage is where sulfur trioxide is converted into sulfuric acid. And we do that by adding water to it. So water plus sulfur trioxide makes sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. So as we've already mentioned, stage two is a reversible reaction. Therefore, we need to consider the conditions that we're going to use at that point carefully to maximize our yield. So what we actually find in this example, the equilibrium position is already far to the right. So we don't need high pressures to push it further to the right at all. The two atmospheres is all we need because that's enough to move the gases through the converter. In terms of the temperature, as we've seen on the actual equation, I gave you the actual enthalpy change. And because that was negative, it tells us that the forward reaction is exothermic. And hopefully we know that if the forward reaction is exothermic, the backward reaction is therefore endothermic. So what we find here is a high equilibrium yield is favored by the low temperatures. But as we've already established in our earlier lessons about the reaction rates and temperature, then we're going to end up with a compromise here because we're not just going to pick the lowest temperature possible because then the rate of reaction would be incredibly low. So what we do is we pick a compromise temperature to give us a good yield, but also a good reaction rate. And the other point to note about why we select our temperature of 450 degrees is for the simple fact that vanadium oxide, which is our catalyst, only works above 380 degrees Celsius. So if we didn't use a temperature above 380, the catalyst would just be redundant. The last thing to bear in mind is that when we're talking about stage three, that is an incredibly exothermic reaction. And if we were literally to take our last reactants, so our sulfur trioxide and water, and just mix them together, what we'd end up with is basically a giant acidic mist. And hopefully in your own minds, you know that acidic mist is generally bad for everyone's health. So we don't want to create an acidic mist. So to bypass that, we carry it out as a two-step reaction. Firstly, we take our sulfur trioxide and pass it through concentrated sulfuric acid to make a chemical called oleum. And then we take the oleum and add water to that 
and we make a large volume of concentrated sulfuric acid. So make sure you remember that stage three is actually split up into like part A and B, if you like. Sulfur trioxide passed through the concentrated sulfuric acid to make the oleum, and then the oleum added to water to make this concentrated sulfuric acid. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now explain that trade-off that we use between the rate of production and the position of our equilibrium in the contact process. You can recall the three stages including the balance symbol equations for the contact process and also recall the conditions that we use for it.